when Pacquiao was was signed with Top Rank, I've been chasing Pacquiao since 2015. Oops. Hi, this is Joe Cortez. You're watching Showbiz The Adult. Oh, this is Bernard Hopkins, Showbiz The Adult. I'm out. Joseph Parker! <laughs> Oops! Up off net! Up off net! What's up, my people? This is Showbiz The Adult. Alright, man. <laughs> You know what? I'm keeping this. I'm keeping this one. Forget, I'm keeping it. Tyson, the Gypsy King Fury. Is he ducking Dillian Burke? Whoops. We got to talk about that. And Terrence Bud Crawford. His latest interview. Speaking on Arrow the True Spence and Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. My reaction. Whoops. I man Lord. Let's get to the reaction. First, I want to say this. We're doing it again. Boy, 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 boy. That's right. We're doing it again. A $250 fully funded account for BUSP.com forward slash showbiz. That's right, we're doing it again, and I'm giving it away during the Belmont Stakes this Saturday, June 20th. So I will be going live for the event starting at 5.30 Eastern this Saturday, June 20th. And I will stay live doing my live stream commentary all the way up to the MMA event, UFC. So be here June 20th. Be here for the live stream commentary. We're going to have a lot of fun. And I will be giving away that $250 fully funded account. But what I'm about to do right now is make a bet on a Belmont Stakes. Guess who I'm betting for? Tis the law. Tisn't with the law. Uh huh. Tisn't with the law. Tisn't with the law. So let's go to busr.com forward slash showbiz. Let's log in. Let's see. Uh, the Belmont Stakes uh, is right. <laughs> yeah. Tis the law. You know, tis the law. He uh, won me $5,000. Let's put $100 on tis the law. How much will we get? 60 cents. That's a good bag. Let's do that. Come on. Let's go, tis the law. What? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> it's always more interesting when you know you got money on it. So create your accounts and make sure you go to busr.com forward slash showbiz. You got to go to the showbiz landing page so you can get that 20% off. And while you're there, you know you got the UFC event, Blaze versus Volkov. And our boy in our community, our show business partner, Frank the Crank Camacho, will be fighting on that card. Let's go, Frank. Frank is a supporter of Showbiz the Adult in our community. So let's go, Frank. We're rooting for you, and good luck June 20th. Joseph Parker. Black, two sugars. Okay, so let's talk about Tyson the Gypsy King Fury. Is he ducking Dillian White? You know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is why uh, uh, this is uh, uh, a topic right now. Tyson, the Gypsy King Fury, has said that he's not interested in fighting Dillian White. February 2021. He said he's looking to take on Deontay, the bronze bomber. Wow. And then he's looking right past Dillian White. He's looking to take on Anthony A.J. Joshua for their two-fight agreement, okay? They're talking about having the two-fight deal come 2021. And Tyson the Gypsy King Fury, he said himself, he's only looking at the big fights right now. Not considering Dillian White as a big fight. Is that a duck? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Dillian White is the interim champion, okay? So he's the mandatory. WBC. He's fought for that spot. He's earned that spot by taking on Oscar Rivas. So how can Tyson, the Gypsy King Fury, work around that and take on an AJ without handling his mandatory? 
Well, he may just have support by the WBC. And this is why Dillian White is talking about the legal route. He's saying, hey, look, I'm the mandatory and I have that date. Okay, that Tyson the Gypsy King Fury must satisfy by February 2021. So he's taking the legal route against the WBC. The WBC, though, if they're more interested in Tyson the Gypsy King Fury versus Anthony AJ Joshua, then they have a little loophole here. They have a way out to skip over Dillian White. And that's a little thing called the franchise title. See, if Bob Arum requests that Tyson the Gypsy King Fury becomes the franchise champion and the board of the WBC agrees with Bob Arum, they could just slap that franchise title on Tyson the Gypsy King Fury and he wouldn't have any mandatories. All of a sudden, the mandatory evaporates. And the WBC has every right to do that. But we must highlight this. Dillian White and the WBC, they're not the best buddies, are they? Dillian White, he's been ranked number one forever. And he was screaming and complaining, saying that he should be next as the mandatory for Deontay, the bronze bomber Wilder. But that never transpired. He got extremely close once. And that's when the WBC said, well, Dillian White versus Luis Ortiz, that should be the eliminator for who will be the mandatory for Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder. And Dillian White, he said, nay. So the winner between Dominic Brazil Molina took that spot. And that's how Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder had that mandatory against Brazil. And then Dillian White, he had his fight with Oscar Rivas to become WBC interim champion. And guess what happened there? Whoops, where's the B stamp? And then there were speculations about the gloves and all those things that got really messy. Then the WBC temporarily removed Dillian White as the WBC interim champion. So now we're here. Dillian White is the WBC interim champion, but he doesn't have the best relationship with the WBC. And Tyson the Gypsy King Fury, he only wants the big fights. And guess what? Overwhelmingly, the fans, they feel the same way as Tyson Fury. So I suspect that the WBC is going to slap that franchise title on Tyson the Gypsy King Fury. And we're not going to get that Dillian White fight. We're going to get Tyson the Gypsy King Fury versus Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder. And then his back-to-back -back fights with AJ if Tyson Fury does his job against Deontay Wilder and AJ does his job against Pulev. So is Tyson Fury ducking Dillian White? Not exactly. To prefer to fight Anthony Joshua for all the straps and Anthony Joshua being the guy who knocked out Dillian White, I'm not sure if you should call that a duck. You just should call that a preference. That Tyson the Gypsy King Fury would rather become the undisputed lineal champion of the world. Now, Tyson Gypsy King Fury, he didn't say that he would never take on Dillian White. He's saying that he wants Dillian White after AJ. Now, I love to see what you guys think in the comments below about that. But as of now, let's do this reaction to Terrence Crawford. Joseph Parker, black, two sugars. <laughs> let's do this reaction. Uh -huh. You know, Terrence, Everyone in the world wants to see you and Errol Spence Jr. fight. First of all, what oh, do you think of Errol on. Spence Jr.? Sorry, not to pause it so fast. But what he just said was, everybody in the world wants to see Crawford versus Spence now. <laughs> that only just confirmed what I said about Derrick James. He was capping when he said that Terrence Crawford versus Errol the True Spence isn't ready yet. I'm telling you, that fight is ready, okay? Anybody who knows boxing at all wants that fight. Okay, so uh, yeah, I, I, I agree here with Brian Custer that everybody in the world wants that fight with Terrence Crawford versus Errol the True Spence. As a fighter. Uh, he's a great fighter. You know, like I tell everybody I'm a fan I've been a fan since he was in a in the amateurs uh fighting on the USA team and uh fighting I'm sorry in the Olympics you hear how he said that he was a fan he's a fan of Errol the true Spence because he's a warrior 
And real recognize real. And Errol the True Spence to Terrence Crawford, he looking real familiar. While we all split, I don't know when it comes to Terrence Crawford and Errol the True Spence. They actually respect each other. I don't know why we're so disrespectful to the other fighter when we're fans of the other. It makes no sense in the world. Where Terrence Crawford just admit that he's a fan of Errol Spence. Like we've been watching Errol since he was a kid, you know. Uh, there's nothing really bad I can say about his talent or his skill set. You know, uh, it's just business when it's when it comes between me and him. Right. He want to be the best. Yeah. He want to be the best. He want to be the best in the division, and he feels he's the best in the division. And I feel like I'm the by far the best in the division. By you far. Know? So that's when you, you hear that. You hear that. It's just competition. It's just competition. We don't have to get our panties in a bunch, okay? It's just competition. You got two alpha males bumping yeah. heads and got to see who's number one. Yeah. I'm sure you, Basic in, man. in your quiet time, you've played out the fight in your uh -huh. mind. Um, if this fight comes to fruition, how do you see it playing out? Me winning. <laughs> That's it. That's... That's... I don't I don't see nothing else. I love this like, dude. I'm yeah. sorry, dude. I love I love Terrence Crawford. I love this dude, man. This dude, he just got that 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 confidence, just that that person now. Like I feel like God with Errol Spence too. But Terrence Crawford, I just feel like I know this dude or something like just how he acts, how he is, is extremely relatable. That's all. Me winning. That's, that's that's it. That's all. Like, yeah. When I put, when I play fights out in my head, I never play a fight out that that I'm losing. Yeah, you know, uh, me at the best of my 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 abilities, I don't feel nobody can beat me. Good point. You know, I, All right, he said him at the best of his abilities, he feel that nobody could beat him. You know, um, when you see like fights play out, okay, and people say, uh, you know, this guy beat this guy. Let's do uh, Tyson Fury versus Deontay the Browns, Bummer Wilder. Most casuals know that fight. Now, when you say, you know, uh, uh, Tyson Fury, he was just better than Deontay Wilder. That's why he won. That's it. It's not so, not, that's not it exactly. Okay, when Deontay Wilder has his quote unquote excuses, uh, you can't just say, oh, uh, no excuses. I mean, look. A lot of times, there's a lot of reasons why people lose on the, on the night, okay? Uh, uh, you know, he was having a bad night. Um, he had the flu. Uh, he had hand issues. He had shoulder issues. He just wasn't feeling himself that night. The other guy was in the zone. So, um, you know, that's why I say with Deontay the Browns, Barbara Wilder, yeah, I think there are a few things that were uh, uh, issues to me, like the mask and stuff like that. But first and foremost, uh, Tyson Fury is better than him. But there's other things that I think also attributed to that wasn't completely Deontay Wilder. That wasn't the best Deontay Wilder. You can tell by his legs. Okay. I think that two and a half month turnaround affected his stamina. So there's a lot of reasons. So when you hear Terrence Crawford say, you know, me at the best, at my best, nobody can beat me because he knows you're, he's not a robot. Every night he fight, he isn't at his best. There's fights that he won when he wasn't at his best. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I mean, I totally get it. When you say at my best, nobody can beat me. I get that. Uh, if I train to the to the to the core, yeah, I'm in tremendous shape. Right. I don't believe nobody can beat me. That's just me That's being honest. The, yeah, there you go. Uh, you two, There's a two lot of great elements. Body punchers. Do you see this more as a strategic fight? Do you see it as you know just two guys going forward? It better be strategic. I guess in, from a strategy standpoint, how do you see that fight? It, it better be strategic. It better be. If Errol Spence starts off not being strategic, he will. Because, because Terrence Crawford is too good of a fighter. When you're fighting somebody that good, okay, uh, <laughs> look at Brian Custer's face. <laughs> it's like he's listening to me like, dude, can you just press play on it? I'm about to press play on the video. Well, I, honestly, I don't think he'll fight me like, just trying to come straight to me. Right. I don't think I think exactly. that would be a, a, a bad decision for him. Absolutely, now, he may, you know, but but I think it'd be more of a, a chess match than anything because yep. I feel like 
I'm always changing things up. And if he can't keep up with with me changing changing up the style and changing up the pace and changing up the fight style, then he's going to fall behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, look, look. It's going to be a chess match until it isn't. This is what I mean. They both got the same mentality, okay? They're going to both start off uh, uh, the chess match. But who's ever winning that chess match, the other one's going to start fighting. I don't, they don't have time. They only got 12 rounds. So who's ever winning that chess match, the other one's going to start fighting. And they have enough dog in them to where uh, uh, fighting is almost enough to alleviate, you know, all of the chess moves. So I'm saying if... Aaron, if Errol the True Spence is winning the chess match against Terrence Bud Crawford, Terrence Bud Crawford is going to start fighting. And when he starts fighting, Errol the True Spence is going to fight back. It's going to end up because they just two dogs. So eventually it's going to end up that way. It's going to start that way until the other one start, you know, falling back. And then they just going to, hey, you're just going to have to beat me physically. Let's see what happens. I'm telling you, that's what's going to happen. And it's going to spark the other one to fight back because they're just dogs, man. That's how I see it. So... That's how I look at it. Uh, and Terrence Crawford beats him. Everyone's going to say, oh, it's because Errol had the accident. He's not the same fighter that he was. Did that any of that come into your mind at all when, you, when he had For that sure. Accident? For sure. For sure. You know, when I look at when, – when Pacquiao was, was signed with top rank, I've been chasing Pacquiao since 2015, trying to get that Oops! Fight. You know, uh, they, they've been – you know, picking other fighters over me instead of fighting me like Brandon. Did he just say that Manny Pacquiao's been ducking him? The plot thickens. Rios, Jesse uh, Vargas, all those type of fighters. Oh, real? Instead of fighting me when I was there to fight. Everybody in the, in the media, everybody in their mama, all He's chasing this old fighter. Why don't he fight somebody? Uh, uh, Pacquiao washed up. Pacquiao this. Pacquiao. Pa Pacquiao's washed up. Pacquiao's this and that until he, you know, beat up on Keith Foreman. And all of a sudden, I see what he's saying. Oh, that Pacquiao ain't no good fighter no more. Uh, right, because because him wanting Arrow to choose Spence after the accident, you're like, because people doing that with Manny Pacquiao now. Oh, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao, he wants Arrow to choose Spence. Yeah, it's just so happened that he wants him now after he had that car accident. So, Errol to, so Terrence Bud Crawford, he doesn't want that. He doesn't want, he, he, he got experience with that. He retire and this and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I get it. I still want to fight. Once Pacquiao leave and go to PBC, Everybody want to fight Pacquiao. <laughs> what and all the and all the writers saying Pacquiao still got a lot left. Pacquiao looking young. I'm like, wow. Like, where was all this energy when I was trying to fight Pacquiao? Like, I can understand that. I can understand his perspective. I don't see it all the way that way, but I can understand his perspective. How do I expect him to feel? He should feel exactly like that. He should feel like that is the absolute truth. So I get it. I get it. Somebody. It's just crazy to me. He was in the bathroom. It's crazy to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we had Errol on the podcast, he said that you two talked on the phone and talked about uh, fighting each other. Can you give us some insight? Well, I called him because we was on, we was going back and forth on Twitter, you know, and I was just like, you know what? I'm about to call He's him. a real one. He's a real you one. You know what I mean? I got your number. I'm not about to do all this. I'm going direct because I want you to know that I'm for real about what I'm talking about. That's because he's in his, he's knocking on his mid-30s. Let me tell you what that means. That generation, that era, we, we don't beef, just fake beef in front of everybody else. If this beef is beef, man, what up? So, uh, yeah, that's what that's about. <laughs> I totally get that. Oh. You know, and he, we just talked about the business side of boxing. You know, like it's a business at the end of the day. And we both agreed on that. And, you know, he's a cool dude. So he said that Errol Spence's plans did they wouldn't fight with Errol Spence's plans. What was his plans? Cause from my under what is that water? From my under is there some water linking? <laughs> Do you guys hear the water? Anyway, uh from my understanding, um Oh, I know what that is. Take off my head. 
oh, somebody's taking a bath and it's going through the... All right, anyway, uh, from my understanding, um, Elder True Spence is going to take on Garcia, then Pac-Man, then Terrence Bud Crawford. Or maybe those weren't the plans initially. Tell me Terrence Crawford's next three fights. Uh -huh. Because Errol said, from a realistic standpoint, when I come back, no tune-up, Danny Garcia, uh -huh. Manny Pacquiao, right. and then Terrence Crawford at the very end of 2021. So realistically, what are Terrence Crawford's next three fights? I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. Didn't I ask the same questions? I said, I don't know Terrence Crawford's plan. And everybody in the comments start acting like I was a Terrence Crawford hater. When I don't hate Terrence Crawford, I like Terrence Crawford. I'm a fan of his. But I was just like, Errol Spence has a plan. What's Terrence Crawford's plan? I am very eager to hear what he has to say. Well, I really can't say what Terrence Crawford next three fights is. You know, because it's kind of hard to pull out names and it don't come to fruition you know my next fight uh should be pacquiao you know uh, we in the talks with with, with team pacquiao oh uh -huh. i've been hoping that that fight can get made but anything after that i really can't say because i'm only looking forward to the next fight if so we have we have to demand that fight Terrence Crawford versus Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. We have to demand that fight. I'm not sure how Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao fans feel about it. Um, I, I'm curious. I'd like to know how you feel in the comments below. Um, me, uh, if I were a Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao fan, I would either want him to retire or become undisputed champion at welterweight. Um, don't play in between for what? Um, but uh, I think it, it seems as though he's been chasing Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao for years. And I'm not sure why now. Why would he agree now? OK, um, it's harder to make the fight now. Uh, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao got easier options within the PBC. So, um, yeah, uh, it, it, we we as fans, we're going to have to demand the fight. If we can get that fight secure and, you know, signed, then hopefully that can be my next fight. Hmm. Uh, let me throw a couple names out who've, who've, who've come at you. Uh, Kel Brook. Come on. Right. Well, Let's Kel Brook go. being... Uh, Coming out of the woodwork Come on. a little lately, you know he he wants to fight. Let's go. You know, that's a great fight as uh -huh. well. You know, but what with this pandemic, I don't think that they letting people from overseas come, come over on. here or us go over there. I think that's why uh, Lomachenko is still stuck over there. Uh, I think it's a lot of. Oh, hold on, fights. wait a minute. But Lomachenko, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Cause no, wait, time, er, time out. Time out. Lomachenko and Teofimo Lopez, that fight is almost like close to being made for September. The I, nah, I don't I'm not sure if the pandemic is a good reason right now. Uh, it looks like that stuff is going to clear up and they have workarounds. He worked with Bob Arum and Bob Arum is making a lot of things happen um, with top rank and the fights that's rolling out. Bob Arum has he's been very forward thinking when it comes to that. So. I don't know, Terrence. I don't know. I think uh, that Kell Brook fight is a perfect fight for Terrence Crawford. If he has nothing to do right now but twiddle his thumbs. But on top of that, uh, Errol the True Spence, a guy that you want, that's a like opponent for you guys and Kell Brook. Errol the True Spence stopped him in this round. Then, you know, Terrence Crawford, you should stop him earlier if you're better than Errol the True Spence. I think... Um, man, but, but, uh, Kale Brook is one of the better welterweights, period. If he's fighting that welterweight, you can't name too many people better than Kale Brook because he already beat Sean Porter. There ain't too many people better than Kale, fighters better than Kale Brook. And, and he'll be the biggest challenge for Terrence Crawford in his career, period. Think about it. So, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know about that. Fighters that can't come to the United States and fight because of that. You know, Man, so that I, I'm, fight, I don't I'm think a little disappointed happen. in that answer. Uh, and would that be a fight? But but at but see see but hold on that would that be a fight at 154? But hold on, I'm sorry, but hold on. He just talked about how he was chasing Pac Man. Now somebody chasing him, um, he. Oh man, dude, he has excuses for it. He said the pandemic. The pandemic. I I, I think um you know 
not to undermine the pandemic, but it looks like negotiations is continuing on with Lomachenko and Teofimo Lopez. So um, I don't know. I don't know if that's a, if that's a good excuse. Just on the merit of, like he said, him chasing uh, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao, uh, Kell Brook definitely deserves the chance, man. I don't know, man. 54 or would he, 147. he you know he hasn't fought really at 147 in a long time so would you have to come up to no 147 no i asked him i said can you make the weight you know what i mean he said he can make the weight he want to be a champion again so he would challenge me for my 147 uh title okay, okay. right your yeah, title list or champion then you know i'm coming to you right. you're not coming right. to me right. Right. Uh, right. if you right. come right. to me and you sending shots to me don't send shots talk about you want to fight me but i gotta come up to this way well he did champion at one but, but he didn't he didn't though he didn't he said i come down to 147 so kale brook he wants to fight man tell me why would i come up to your way if you challenge but, me but he didn't <laughs> but he didn't so um, it doesn't even your dennis ugas uh is the latest person who's who's come out and called you out so has sean porter uh they've talked about wanting to fight you keith thurman uh, came out and said he wanted to fight you. Out of those three guys, in your opinion, which one is a more makeable fight? All of them. <laughs> Every last one of them is a makeable fight. Yeah. I don't see what was standing yeah. away on any three fighters that just called me out. Yeah, you know, I feel like Keith Thurman would be the biggest fight. I think Sean Porter would be the biggest fight. I think people are down on Keith Thurman, though. I think I think Sean Porter's stock is higher, or at, it's at at least the the if like the curve. <laughs> if there was a stock curve, I think he's going up and Keith Thurman's going down. <laughs> if anything, they're equal. I don't know if Keith Thurman's the biggest fight. It may be Sean Porter, bro. They're one of them, you know. So all three of them is good fights to be made. Yeah, all four, all four. If I put uh, Kel Brook in it, I, I'm just uh, for out of curiosity's sake. Um, this it seems as if the PBC has question. the big name welterweights on, on their side. So why did you why did you choose Bob Arum and Top Rank as opposed to it seems like all the big welterweights oh, ends up signing with the PBC and Al Heyman? This dude is amazing because I, I still want that. That Pacquiao fight, huh? And I felt like you know, the Pacquiao fight. Oh, Pacquiao and fight. All the other names uh, come looking for me. At the same time, I don't feel like being from PBC or being from top rank should have interfered with with any oh, okay. fights getting made. That's On a good reason. That I already fought PBC fighters before. You know, when I fought uh, Felix Diaz and John Molina, uh, they they was signed with PBC and Al Ham. Okay. Okay. So that's pretty much my reaction. I think Brian Custer, he did a an excellent job. And I didn't mind Terrence Crawford's answers, especially when it gave, came to Arrow the True Spence, when it came to Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. I did mind his answer when it came to Kel Special K Brook. I, I think that fight makes all the sense in the world. Um, I think he sees Keith Thurman as an easier fight than Sean Porter. So he say he thinks it'll be a bigger fight. That's what I think. Okay. Um, but he probably genuinely feel that that's a bigger fight. Either way, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, I think Showtime Sean Porter stock is higher than Keith one time Thurman. I think if you look at their last fights, both of them lost, but more, there were more people feeling that, uh, Sean Showtime Sean Porter is a more dangerous fighter okay so I think it'll be a bigger fight with Terrence Bud Crawford and Showtime Sean Porter than with Keith one time Thorman there's a lot of people who likes Sean Porter's style looking at that last fight with Errol the True Spence they prefer that over Keith one time Thorman so I think uh 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 that answer was a little off for me personally but I, I don't I'm not I'm not going to call Terrence Crawford a liar say that he's a uh, captain or whatever maybe he genuinely feels that way um, as far as why he's uh, resigned to top rank, I kind of get that answer too. Um, I get the whole thing with him saying that, you know, I don't think me signing to top rank should have stopped fights from happening since I had fights with PBC fighters before. And then he said he still wanted that fight with Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. 
So I get that too. I, he may have been promised or something. I I get that too. I I, I don't think obviously uh, Terrence Bud Crawford didn't sign to top rank to hide from uh, the welterweight division because he's calling them all out. Okay, so uh, Brian Custer, you did a fantastic job. Fantastic job. This was great. Let me know how you feel in the comments below. Showbiz adult. I'm out. Shh. Huh.